Today I'd like to speak to you about a tool that's used and, and probably the single most important tool that's used in biological agriculture and probably should be used uh, in growing any food, including food in the home garden. And this little tool is called the refractometer. You take a, a garlic crusher and you crush uh, a leaf of, of the crop that you're growing, of, of any vegetable for example in the home garden or your orchard crop or your field crop and you squeeze a little juice onto the plate of the refractometer and you look through this little sawn off telescope and you're measuring something called BRICS level. What you're doing in effect is that you're monitoring photosynthesis, how well the plant is photosynthesizing. You, your role as a grower essentially is that you're a chlorophyll manager, you're looking after that green pigment. You don't want white colours and stripes and blotches because in that case that's called chlorosis. You've lost some of the sugar factories. The sugar factories that produce this basic building block uh, in the plant called glucose and that building block really governs the, the, the quality of the plant, uh, the nutrient density of the plant, uh, how much that plant is going to feed the biology that's smothered around the plant roots waiting for its feed of glucose on a daily basis. The, f the plant produces sugars through photosynthesis. Half of those sugars are translocated down to the roots and 60% of that half, which is 30% of its total production of sugar, of glucose, is given away. It's sort of a, a rule of the universe. A give and you shall receive. The plant doesn't give away 30% of its sugar production of its basic building block without getting something in return. And of course what it gets in return is the delivery of nutrients because the microorganisms that are smothered around that root waiting for their daily feed of sugar, those microorganisms of course deliver minerals into the plant. They protect the plant from disease, they fix nitrogen from the 74,000 tons of gas that nitrogen gas that hovers above every hectare, they solubilize phosphate, in fact every mineral has a microorganism behind it. So it's a huge role they play and the plant well and truly understands that even if we've failed to understand that in many cases. And so how well you're feeding that microbe army is governed and can be measured with this little tool called the refractometer. And we'll talk uh, at length shortly about just how you use it and just what it means uh, in, in various contexts. So you're squeezing a little juice onto the plate of this little tool and what's happening, that's why, why it's called a refractometer, is that the light refracts as you hold it up and look through through the little device, uh, the light refracts through the dissolved solids and the, and the plant sap that you've squeezed onto the screen. And basically you're monitoring the, the dissolved sol solids in that plant, you're monitoring the nutrient density, you're monitoring how well that, pho that plant is photosynthesizing, how many minerals and sugars and so forth have been delivered to the plant. So it's a real measure of plant health and the guideline is that the healthier the plant, the lower the disease resistance. And so you're measuring something called degrees of bricks and you, it's called measuring BRICS levels and the aim for, for most crops, not all of all crops, but the aim for most crops is to try and get above the magical figure of 12 degrees BRICS. And if you can get your crop up across that line by having good nutrition in the crop, then you have this inherent, this almost automatic uh, pest resistance, particularly insect resistance but also a fungal resistance. You've got a healthy plant, you've got the plant's immune system uh, powering to the max, so consequently you're going to have a far less need to, for chemical intervention and that's the aim of this whole approach, to get away from these petrochemicals and all of their negative side effects. So what we're going to do in effect was just t teach you how you would use this device and, and, and the many benefits from using a refractometer. Uh, but what we'd select for example is the last fully developed leaf on the plant and we might select a couple of these leaves and we're going to roll those leaves into a ball and normally you would use gloves and I just didn't happen to have any gloves out here in the garden at the time but we roll those into a ball and sort of soften it up a little bit like so and we place it inside the garlic crusher like so we pack the bowl of the garlic crusher and we're going to squeeze some of that juice now onto the face of the refractometer so as you can see we're squeezing this juice and you can see there's a few, you only need a few drops and we're going to have enough here hopefully because sometimes you get this effect and that will be enough to do the job that will give us a bricks level, that's about how much juice you need and then we, put, we close the top off and we hold that up to sunlight and adjust and what we've got here is a bricks in this garden of 11, I'm not quite on the mark um, but still, it's not too bad at all. We're aiming, of course, for 12, as I mentioned. Um, we'll show you a, a diagram of just what bricks looks like um, that, we'll, that, we'll, that we'll include with this video so you know see what you're looking at. 
So as I said earlier, the aim is to try and get above 12 degrees bricks, certainly for this tomato plant that would be the aim. Uh, and what we've achieved then is you know, a, a good level of nutrient density. The higher the better obviously. And we, we need to understand, for example, uh, insect pressure and what insects are about. And we think of them as the scourge of, uh, of our crops. Uh, but of course they're there for a purpose. There is nothing accidental in nature. And in the case of the insect, the insect's role in the great scheme of things is that the insect is a garbage collector. And if we produce garbage, the insect will arise. The, the findings originally came from a, a rather brilliant a researcher by the name of, of Professor Phil Callahan, and in his landmark work, a book called Tuning Into Nature, Phil showed that the feelers on insects aren't actually feelers, that the feelers on insects are actually very complex antennae, and they're designed to pick up infrared radiation that the plant um, releases, and the insect is designed to eat substandard plants. It's designed to take out the garbage in the gene pool. And of course, if we produce garbage, the garbage collectors will arrive, and that's exactly the deal. If you've got a garden that's filled, or a crop that's filled with insects, and requires increasing amounts of chemical intervention, then you've done a poor job as a chlorophyll manager, and you've actually called those insects in. So you created the problem, and then you come in with a big hammer to try and correct it, poisoning your crop, your working environment, and the people eating that food. So if we acknowledge the importance of bricks, and then of course the big question is, well how do we lift the bricks and what do we do to avoid it dropping very low? Well, one of the key things is the form of nitrogen you're using and, and how much of that nitrogen that's been using. And the biggest single limiting factor in terms of bricks levels is nitrate nitrogen. You know, the fact that so many of our crops are jam-packed with, with nitrates. And of course, the thing to understand here is that there are, uh, there are over 200 published papers on nitrates and their link to cancer. Nitrates are carcinogens. Nitrates limit the capacity of the blood to carry oxygen and of course uh, Otto Warburg won his Nobel Prize showing the link between anaerobism and the, and the cell's incapacity to, to, to access oxygen and, and cancer and, and of course this is what nitrates do, they limit the carrying capacity, the blood's capacity to carry oxygen and the, the deal is that the plant should comprise 75% ammonium nitrogen and 25% nitrate nitrogen and a great deal of what we're eating uh, has, has, has that ratio inverted in, in effect. We have 75% nitrates, 25% ammonium, and of course this is toxic food for ourselves and for our children. So what happens in the plant is that if you've oversupplied nitrates, and that can be obviously because you're trying to pump your, your cabbage up rapidly to, to make money when you get paid 50 cents for your cabbage, and of course it sells for $4 in the supermarket, um, you know, we, we get what we pay for and that the bloke had no choice but to pump this cabbage up and, 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 and maybe it comprises 75% nitrate. Um, but the bottom deal is that nitrates only enter the plant with water and they always enter the plant with water and if you've got high nitrates you've got low levels of everything else and so your bricks level is always going to be low because it's, there's a nutrient dilution factor when nitrates pack the plant because they came in with water and diluted everything else. So whenever you have high nitrates and that's applicable to the home garden when you overdid your chook manure or whatever uh, and it's of course applicable very often in commercial agriculture and horticulture. So one of the first things you're going to look at if your, level, your bricks levels are low are whether you've overdone nitri nitrate nitrogen and then maybe the second thing you're going to look at is whether you've got enough calcium in the soil. We call calcium the trucker of all minerals and calcium's a huge player because we're measuring mineral density, we're measuring nutrient density and calcium plays such a huge role that we're going to look at calcium. In the home garden uh, of course the guideline often is soil pH and most soil pHs in home gardens are you know 6.4 is the ideal soil pH and most people when they bring their soil into our, into our showroom and we check it for them, which is a free service, uh, we find that they've got pHs of 5.2 or whatever. 6.4 is the point at which most minerals are uptaken by the plant. The more acid you get, the lower your pH, the less there is in terms of uptake of nutrients. And so, you know, calcium is the biggest player in, in, in lifting that pH in most cases. And in the home garden situation, in fact, in agriculture as well, um, we need calcium in many cases, and calcium plays a big role in lifting your bricks level. Okay, we've moved in the garden. I'm standing now in front of my uh, mulberry tree up in my orchard, um, laden with fruit. Um, mulberries, of course, tremendous source of antioxidants. The leaf, the mulberry leaf, uh, an incredible tool that's under-recognized in the West. It's, it's very, very popular in China. But mulberry leaf tea is one of the single best things you can do to, to, to stabilize blood sugar. So, you know, there's so many people that are pre-diabetic. This is a great tool and there's some very good research in China. Uh, mulberry leaf tea, incredible. 
So back to the story, we were talking about what determines and raises bricks because we're trying to get up to this magical 12 or higher. One of the key minerals, we talked about calcium, the second most important key mineral is phosphorus. We do need to have, I mean phosphorus is required for sugar production. Sorry, I just have to keep interrupting from the noises from my little dog who's out here in the garden with me. Charlie, stop all the noise. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're talking about the key minerals. Phosphorus uh, is the other major mineral that governs, governs high, bri high bricks. It's really, really important. Every stage of sugar production involves phosphorus. You look at the actual sugar factory and you see phosphate, phosphate, phosphate everywhere. And so you need to have phosphorus, you need calcium, uh, and of course other minerals, but those are the two key minerals that are, that are important in this whole process. So we're going to talk about uh, you know the other things you can you can deduce from from reading bricks. One, one of the very important things um, is that that the plant has has produced its sugars and it's pumped half of the sugars it produced down into the roots uh, and it and it begins that at the end of the day maybe 4:45 4, 4 5 o'clock there's this translocation begins of the sugars that were produced during the day and so consequently the plant should start the day with significantly lower bricks levels than what it has at the end of the day because it pumped half of its sugars down to the roots. Now if you're monitoring bricks levels and you find that the plant doesn't have a higher bricks level uh, in the afternoon than the morning, that they're staying, they're staying the same or whatever, um, what you've picked up is the fact that those sugars aren't being translocated and the key mineral, and it can be very often missing so often when we do tissue testing, the key mineral that's lacking is boron. Boron opens a little trapdoor that allows the chloroplast, the little sugar factory, to move those sugars down into the roots. And if you don't have enough boron and the trapdoor doesn't open, you don't move the sugars down and then suddenly this little trace mineral boron becomes hugely important because you're not feeding the workforce, the microbial workforce who are going to deliver the minerals. And for the sake of three or four dollars worth of boron, you don't move the sugars, you don't feed the bugs, they don't feed the plant, you don't get nitrogen free from the atmosphere, you lose some of your de disease protection, that little trace mineral becomes hugely important. Uh, it shouldn't even be called a minor element in that concept, uh, in that context, sorry. So you're going to measure the leaf in the morning uh, and you're going to measure it in the afternoon and it needs to be lower in the morning. And if it's not, then you've picked up a boron deficiency using your little refractometer. Now, there are other things you can pick up with a refractometer. If you measure the bottom of the plant and you measure the top of the plant and there's a variation, then there's a mineral imbalance. Very often it can be linked to a potassium shortage. Uh, because potassium is very mobile and potassium has vacated the lower leaves to go up to the fruit and the, and the growing tips where it's required and you've picked that up. Uh, there should be roughly the same reading throughout the plant when you're taking bricks levels. You can use a refractometer to uh, get an idea of, uh, of weed pressure. Um, the idea is that the weed should always have a bricks that's significantly lower than the plant. The weed, of course, uh, the plant obviously, you know, if you've got good nutrition, um, the weed doesn't often grow where there's good nutrition and if the nutrition's poor and the weed's flourishing and the weed's got a higher bricks then you need to look at your nutrition because the weed often is a signpost of things that are lacking in your soil often that'll be calcium boron or phosphorus or whatever and so the refractometer plants that have high bricks levels usually will grow on soils that have lower weed pressure high bricks crops are going to have a greater resistance to frost because they've got a lot of, basically it changes the freezing point when you've got a lot of sugars and, and so forth within the plant and so you can enhance frost protection if you lift bricks levels. One of the factors that will drop bricks levels very rapidly and of course you're trying to hide, hold them up there because that's how you're going to have your proactive disease protection and insect protection and one of the things that will drop bricks um, quite rapidly will be prolonged periods without sunshine. So cloudy days that have continued for some time, you'll notice your bricks levels start to fall. Now the speed at which they fall is governed by how much humus you have in the soil. If you've got good humus levels, then the bricks will hold and hold. If you've got low humus levels, it'll start plummeting after a couple of days of shade. Now there is a trick that you can use to prevent that from happening, and, and that involves a natural acid called fulvic acid. Fulvic acid is often referred to as the second sun. You can actually compensate for a lack of sunshine by foliar spraying. If you've had a few days of cloudy weather and you've seen your bricks start dropping, then you come in with a foliar spray of fulvic acid. And fulvic acid basically serves, as the name suggests, as a second sun and allows uh, the bricks levels to, to be held uh, despite the lack of sunshine. So that's an interesting way that you can use fulvic acid. I'll just have a little break here to eat some of these delicious mulberries because they really are amazing. Just an incredible flavour. The trouble is I probably have black all over me when I finish. So 
One of the other things, um, important things that we can look at with bricks, is that we can actually use the refractometer to monitor what's going to be most effective in terms of, of nutrition that we're going to put on the crop. So we can mark out a square meter and we can spray whatever we might anticipate that might be good for the crop if we haven't tested and we're just guessing. We might try some magnesium sulfate with a little fulvic acid. We might try another spray with some calcium nitrate with a little fulvic acid or, um, or a trace mineral mix. And we spray that on the square metre and of course we pull back from the 10,000 square metres and work out proportionately how much to spray on a square metre, which is usually done with a little hand sprayer. And 40 to 50 minutes later we test again. We test the bricks beforehand, we test after the spray and if the spray is something worth putting on the crop or on the garden or whatever, then we'll see this significant rise, perhaps two degrees of bricks uh, rise in that short time. Sometimes if it's the wrong choice, the bricks will actually drop within that period and we know, well, that wasn't the choice. So we're using the refractometer to determine what's going to be most affected at any given time in our crop. One final fascinating thing about the use of a refractometer is that normally your bricks level is always going to drop at the end of the day. If you're monitoring on a regular basis, always taking the leaf from the same place so that you've got a, a, a reference point, so always the last or the first fully developed leaf is what you're going to use. Um, if you've been monitoring regularly and suddenly you see the plant plummet in bricks in the middle of the day, what you've picked up is a really unique thing that we've, that's been discovered plants are capable of and that's almost a barometer-like characteristic that they've picked up an extreme weather event, often something like a hailstorm. And they've said, right, we're going to pump our sugars down now so that we've got some building blocks when we, when we lose half of our foliage. And we've had growers report on several occasions that exact phenomenon. They've um, been monitoring the bricks regularly. Suddenly they've seen from one day to the next a summit, su sudden plummet in the middle of the day and later that day a hailstorm's come in, in some cases devastated their crop or parts of their crop.